Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where we are ready to begin our first major full-on war against a major power, well, with the exception of the Crusade, which I don't think really counts. It's a Crusade, it's a bit different. We are invading Russia, we're actually doing it in winter, but it's fine, because we're Vikings, we're used to snow, everything's under control. With a two-pronged strike, our main force, led by our lovely Polish prince, Bolslaw Herman, is heading right for the Russian capital, which appears to be pretty well under guards at the moment, marvellously. Meanwhile, sneaking to backstab them, we have got a small side force in this fleet here, heading down towards the large town of Riga, where there is a single unit, and I know what that unit is because I passed it by, it's the flipping faction leader, all by himself. So, we can snipe off two towns pretty bloody easily here. War with Russia beginning momentarily, together with, well, we've got good growth happening all over the empire. Stettin and Stockholm are both about to grow to large towns, and also we've got lovely Magnus up here heading over to Oslo to encourage them to get up to a minor city sooner rather than later. Pezniville will be a city sooner rather than later as well. We've got really good growth going on down here in Cairo. Life is good. I'd say the economy is also stabilising, which is marvellous good news. In fact, we can probably do with moving a couple of priests over here just for the sake of, yeah, getting Alexander more Catholic because this area is now finally majority Catholic so let's actually move some troops over here to speed things up so Alexandria right now 20% Catholic let's see what happens overnight now that I've got this many priests just standing around here because some of these guys are, are getting good they're up to like five out of ten nice though they are picking up some negative traits like odd habits for example. The war habits doesn't actually affect their piety, which is the one which you can see there. Unorthodoxy basically determines if this guy ever became the Pope, what would that actually mean in terms of how he acted? There's violence, there's unorthodoxy, there's things like that. I can't remember all of the metrics now. Basically, they determine, like, how the Pope acts. So if you get, like, a really, really violent Pope, then, like, there will be crusades all over the shop. He'll just call crusades like crazy. Whereas you can also get Popes who, like, don't like doing crusades, and some of them are orthodox versus unorthodox. You know, it makes them more or less likely to excommunicate people, all that sort of thing. So, like, you know, it's worth knowing what the Pope's kind of traits are, which means it can also be very, very worthwhile just keeping a spy around Rome just so you know exactly what the Pope's traits are so what his likelihood to do certain things are. It's also worth keeping an assassin nearby to Rome just in case you ever need to replace the Pope. We're not to that stage yet but uh, later in the game that might well become a thing. Still, I think we're okay for now. Time to see how the Russians are planning to respond to our invasion force here, because technically we're not at war yet, but they've probably figured it out at this point. Significant French forces on the move, probably still just securing rebel territories. Yeah, the AI in this game tends to be a bit slow at securing the rebel territories, but uh, I think the French are finally getting around to it. So I think the French Empire is actually growing pretty nicely over there. I'm thinking of becoming allies with France. I feel like that would be a good thing. They don't have any allies right now. The Imperial Assassins are backing away from my territory which is good. They're a little bit too close for comfort, but I think things are under control at this point. Instead, they are heading over towards Hungary, unsurprising given the Hungarians attempted to attack Vienna and after three failed sieges, gave it up. Instead, I feel like the Imperials might be interested in a little bit of revenge at some point. Vienna is now, oh yeah, Vienna is now much, much better defended. At this point, I think the Hungarians have lost their chance, which is a shame, because they got themselves excommunicated for that, and they haven't even managed to take Vienna. In fact, if anything, they've lost their chance of ever taking it, because the Imperials have now reinforced it quite handily. Now, the Russians, what are you planning to do here? Nothing going on over there, any chance we can see your armed forces? With our spies. When I say spies, I mean priests. Because we're basically just using priests as spies. Yep, okay. One small force rushing back towards the Russian capital. Unsurprising. Main army doing the same. Okay, fine. So we'll probably have to fight them out in the open field. But that's okay. If we can just defend ourselves, there shouldn't be too much of a problem. Egyptians temporarily distracted by a handful of rebels. Good, good, good. And the Egyptians want a ceasefire. Now, if they're offering that, that means it's probably very generous indeed. Yes, indeed. So, what I would like to do instead is extort some money out of them. So, we've been at war for 20 turns. It would be very generous for a ceasefire right now. Instead, I'm willing to do that, but I want tribute, damn it. I'm not sure, like, what would be the right level here. Oh, what about a thousand for five turns? That is still apparently really, really bloody generous. Okay, more then. Lovely. Uh, regular tribute, let's say 2,000 a turn for 8 turns. How would that be? That is, that's apparently balanced. I want to give them something generous to make sure they accept, hopefully. So, let's say 1,500 a turn for 6 turns. 
That strikes me as fair. 1,500 a turn, six turns. That will be reasonable. Yeah, that's still generous. Ceasefire, trade rights. Yeah, come on. Accept it, you bastards. We must decline. Ah, must decline come on. Something further for me to hear then? You see, the problem is they're potentially now going to refuse to actually accept a ceasefire at all, which is kind of annoying. Okay, I'll give you a better deal. I will give you a better deal. All I want, I'm going to offer you something really, really generous. All right, just 1,200 for five. All right, that is generous. We're not going to bring trade rights into it. We're not going to muddle the issue. The answer, I'm afraid, is no. I'm literally Otherwise, offering you what... You? They're pleased. They're pleased. I'm offering them things they bloody want. Okay, single payment. Single payment of like 4,000 florins and we'll call it even. Because I would like to trade with you. We must decline this. Oh, for goodness flipping sake. I think they're actually liking us more and more as time goes by. Enough of this for now. You literally came to me wanting peace. Screw you. All right, I want reparations. And when I say rep I shouldn't really want reparations, should I? I actually started this war. Right, never mind. Next time they offer it to me, I'll probably accept it. Ooh, they're also sending a flipping preacher into my territory. That's not cool. Now, Hungary. What are you planning to do at this point? Because you are in bad shape all of a sudden. Excommunicated. No gains for it. I assume you're just going to basically... Do nothing at this point, because there's not much you can do. Ooh, taking my watchtower off me. Screw you. I'm guessing that's another flipping Imperial agent. No, Russian agent. You know what? I can't blame them for that. Can't blame them for that. Venice is the strongest faction. Stettin, ready to upgrade. Upgrade it. Beautiful. And indeed, uh, yep, Stockholm, ready to upgrade as well. Upgrade it. Nice. We have got the money to do that. Very, very good indeed. Other than that, nothing major going on here. Yeah. Economy stabilizing, I would say. Financial, we're up to 10. Up from last place, we're now up into 10th place. Beautiful. Now, 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 now. The Russians are in an interesting position at this point. Because, of course, right this second, we can head over here and we can attack their capital. However, we have got a secondary force down here as well. And I'm assuming there is, yep, there's still only one thing there. So I'm going to bring this force over here, and at the absolute bare minimum, we're getting this town off them. So, over here, dump them in, and, yep, attack them. Oh, we're not... How is that not in range this turn? Screw you. Well, never mind. Unfortunately, that does give the faction leader actually an opportunity to potentially build some reinforcements. But he won't be able to build anything other than, like, crappy basic spear militia, or probably just uh, town watchers, so it's fine. Uh, but, yeah, we've now put the Russian army into a difficult position here, which is, uh, if they want to go and save their king, they need to start marching in this direction in a hurry. But if they do that, they're going to lose the capital and the faction heir. So, I would say, uh, best thing we can do here is, ooh, are you trying to cleverly block me off? Well, you know what, instead, I, I think, am just going to take you out right now, so you don't show up subsequently. Because I totally, thanks to these roads, have the opportunity to take you out and then hopefully move straight onto the capital. Yeah, we should be fine to do that. Also, this place is already up to 16% Catholic. Beautiful. So, attack this guy right here. Yep, this war. We are at war with Russia. War between Denmark and Russia. Marvellous. Now we just see what the Poles decide to do. And yeah, we've got plenty of space here to go over, smash these guys, and then head over to the capital just to make sure they don't show up in the subsequent fight. Because this over here is just, yeah, basic archer militia, two spear militia, marvellous. Let's just walk over these guys quickly. This is also our first opportunity to see light mail out in the wild. Norse archers come with padded armor by default. But yeah, you upgrade them with light mail, they get some lovely little mail on themselves too, which is very, very cool indeed. So these guys are even tougher than the previous guys. Right, the Russians appear to be moving towards us, which is nice. We've got a slight uphill advantage, so we should be able to take apart their archer militia first. Many as these are, yeah, these are just basic archers. So as a result, these guys have got no armor whatsoever. Though some of them do have fabulous hats. The Russian army can't be denied. They come with some really, really nice hats. Some lovely kind of traditional hats, some lovely pointy hats. Here's more kind of, oh yeah, loads of pointy hats. Right, in comes... This is going to be a little bit familiar if you saw the Rome Total War series. In comes the Archer Barrage. Any second now. And down, 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 down. And now it's going to start falling. Oh, yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. That'll do the job quite nicely. Right. No, don't let them reload. Let's get some flipping actual strength in here. Lovely. Now, yeah. Now we just chase off the archers by just using our scouts to just kind of spook them a little bit. Just to make sure they actually start moving. So you are going to, yeah, you're going to march rather than firing. Forward. Get my own guys to target this here spear militia if need be. Those guys are already down to extremely badly damaged. And at this point, I would say... Skirmish mode back on and you guys back off at this point because, yeah, you've taken, somehow you've taken a knock. Just a light knock from those guys down there, I'd say. Right, let's just get my horses barreling down the hill. Those guys have already broken. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Just uh, make sure we don't take any more damage because we're going to take a light knock. But they've already pretty much gone at this point. Yep. Yeah gone. So at this point, guys, I would say you guys just all walk away and I can just use my many, many scouts at this point just to ride them all down. So now make sure none of them actually trouble us again, please. But yeah, they were just outnumbered so badly, the morale penalties were just disastrously poor for them. That's why they just collapsed. So now what we want to do is we want to ride them down to the last man because we want to make sure, of course, none of these guys actually make it home again because we are capturing a huge part of this army and of course, well, we can ransom them or we can put them to death. I'd say on this occasion, as we are doing a full-scale total war into Russia, we're just going to put them to death. As in all fairness, Bolslaw Herman is kind of a bit dreadful already, so it doesn't really matter. Last three members of the Spear Militia go down. I think they did like, you know, I think two of my guys died and they might well recover. Yes, indeed, four men have been lost and tragically, I don't think we've managed to... No, we've managed to heal one of them. <laughs> we've managed to heal one of them, so I think actually we've lost three men. Beautiful. The total ransom value is basically insignificant, so as a result, sorry guys, you are being executed. Bye bye. So they're now dead, beautiful. And would you believe our relationship with the Russians is down to abysmal at this point? And you have got, he feels appreciated. Because <laughs> I let him off the leash and let him do some murder. Beautiful. Now, yeah, what have we got here? We've got four units here. We've got, that's going to be a full stack army. That is going to be a full stack army, and I do not have much in the way of... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to buy myself a whole bunch of mercenaries just to make sure we've sealed the deal here. Yep. Lovely. Because now my army should, yeah, be matching theirs in terms of numbers. But we've also got the vastly superior force. Because this over here is... Hang on. Just, um, hello, hello. I'm here to talk to you about Jesus and not spy on you at all. Oh. Okay, that may have been unnecessary. <laughs> it turns out half his entire army by volume is Archer Militia. So, uh, as a result, yeah, and the rest of it appears to be Spear Militia. So, I don't think it can really stand up to me, to be honest. Marvellous. The Russian forces, I may have overestimated them slightly. In which case, attack this city. Beautiful, because we might well need to attack it anyway. So, let's get some siege towers up. Let's get at least one ram. Three siege towers. No, three and two ladders. Yeah. That'll do. Then we can train all of that in one go. Beautiful. So we can totally have their capital momentarily. And it will immediately be worth a lot of money to us. Which is beautiful indeed. And you, get out of this area. And get over to here. Because I imagine I'm now going to attack this army. Lose big. And as a result, Riga will fall into our hands basically immediately as well. So... Two Russian towns for the price of one. Now, elsewhere, we've got some other diplomacy to take care of. We have got ourselves... Are you good, by the way? You're okay, actually. Despite being a would-be inquisitor, you have picked up... Yeah, you're a good diplomat. You've picked up a translator of foreign dignitary. You, go and speak to France for me. Because I think me and France ought to be friends. And apparently that's very demanding. Oh, that's a shame. I was hoping they'd go for it. Because right now they literally have no friends. So, hmm... Am I willing to pay them? Well, I can't really afford to pay them much money. I am willing to pay you a small amount of tribute for an alliance. Okay? I'd be willing to do that just so I've actually got some friends here. How about 300 florins for 10 turns? Yeah, balanced. That's balanced. Come on, France. Say yes. I cannot quite accept. Okay. Yeah. What else do you have to suggest? I feel like they're not going to go for it right now. They're not interested. Are you willing to update map information by any chance? That's generous to you. A very reasonable proposal. Very well. We accept. Right, we've updated the maps. That's good at least. Okay, so they've finally taken Bordeaux as well. So France is uh, getting somewhere. They are getting somewhere indeed. And, ooh, I think they're about to take Dijon as well. Someone is probably France. Okay, so France is finally kind of on its feet. 
They've managed to take over this region. Mysteriously, there's two rebel territories over here that no one has taken. It's amazing, no one's taken. This is a small territory. Like, apparently it's been attacked and someone failed to take it. Literally, still no one's taken that. But the French are finally getting around to taking over all the rebel territories around here. Probably including Dijon. So that is very, very good indeed. And yes, indeed, Magnus gets into Oslo, which starts growing at plus 6% like crazy beautiful. So that's now growing at like 200 people a turn. Great, that is really good news. But tragically, yeah, right now I just can't afford anything. I cannot afford a thing. So what I'm going to do now is, yeah, I've now got flipping... Wait, are you... That's a cardinal. That's a cardinal. I've got all three cardinals up here. In Russia, it's just a great big cardinal party. Marvellous. So they, thanks to the fact that all of them are actually pretty damn good, they will convert this place to Catholicism pretty bloody quickly. We've also got Bolslaw Herman here, who is up to, yeah, two dread at this point. Disrespects prisoners, plus more than disrespects, he just straight up murdered hundreds of them. He probably did it himself. Also, oh dear, trouble at home, yeah. Though he has got wife is fair and is just popping out loads of children, unfortunately, because his wife actually had in her retinue a secret love, though no one speaks from of it, plenty of people whisper rumours of his wife having a secret love. So he gets minus one authority because his wife had that in her retinue, which is a shame. But still, she's hot and he has got a lot of children out of her, so it's fine. He is also apparently an alcoholic, which is not so good. Oh yeah, minus three authority and minus three... Even with being minus three command, he slits seven out of ten. Right. Bolslaw Herman, you've you've kind of lost it a little bit, haven't you? You know what? It's okay. You're also fine with blood. Your job is just to go around murdering stuff. The fact that you've got trouble at home and you're an alcoholic, it's all okay. As long as you're loyal and as long as you're good at murder, that's fine for me. Ah, yes indeed. And Alexandra, which was 20% Catholic last turn, straight up to 30 flipping God three. Sake. And I think we've got ourselves a new guy over here. Yes indeed. Divine Connection, Orthodox Instruction, Theologian's Guild Apprentice. Though this guy... You need to naff off, please. Okay, let's just get a few more people back over here. Just to make sure he doesn't sway more of this area to be Islamic. But it's 57% Catholic at the minute. I think it's under control. We can't afford to do anything else here. Yeah, Agent Limit has been reached for priests, so we can't do that. We're just going to have to leave this be and hope that's enough to stop this guy causing trouble for us. And we cannot afford anything else either, unfortunately. Let's just move you just a tiny, tiny bit further up, by the way. So I'd like to see, yes... That's Damascus, and that does not belong to you. Fine. And this Byzantine fortress down here, Corinth, is under siege. The Venetians are pushing bloody hard. And we can actually commission a new crusade. Right. Anytime we want to, we can do that. And if we wanted to, we could flipping call it on any of the Hungarian cities. Marvellous. Actually, no Russian ones have shown up. Maybe you can't. That's interesting. I thought you could. I know you can, obviously, like, up here. So this is a city that is, like, you know, clearly very pagan or whatever that's close-ish to Russian and doesn't currently belong to anyone. You can also use the Crusade target thing, by the way, as a way of just finding out where cities are if you don't happen to know. So, like, you know, you can always point out where cities are to you, which is kind of cool. So we could have a great big... Ooh. I wonder if he'd go for it. If I actually asked for a Crusade against Cordoba, would the Pope do it? Because that would break his alliance. With the Moors, which he currently has. So I feel like he wouldn't necessarily go for that. Alternatively, there's... Yeah, there's Iconium there. There's Baghdad over here. There's Algiers there. I would... I would like a crusade to Antioch. But not just this second. Okay, just this second. I'm busy. Once we've got the Russian situation settled, I would love to have a crusade to Antioch. That would be marvellous. And if I ask for a crusade, he'll pretty much go for it, I would say. Just because, yeah, actually, we are 8 out of 10. So they're happy with me for now. Everything is good. Yeah, I don't think there's anything more I can do right now. Because right now we're low on money. But luckily, we can very quickly sort that out. Because war is very good for earning money if you do it right. Biggest question, what are the Russians going to do now? Because I suspect attack this army and lose badly. End the turn. Big French armies bumming around near Paris. What are you thinking of attacking with that? Because you've got big armies you're not doing anything with right now. Also, I think I just saw an Imperial Assassin heading back north. Yeah, there's an Imperial Assassin close by to Frankfurt. I should go and take care of that because I've got my own Assassin now in our house. Would you believe the Russian princess has stopped speaking to me? Very, very rude indeed. And as I suspected, yes indeed, the main Russian force is heading straight at me. And I suspect I'm going to utterly destroy them. Oh no! They didn't dare attack. 
And I can't blame them. Now, are the Egyptians going to offer me peace again? Because if they do, I'll probably just flipping accept it. No, they've decided now they can't be flipping bothered. Oh, and the English are going for Bruges. Okay, that's not the worst thing in the world. I doubt they'll be able to take it with that force. They'll just soften it up for me. It'll be fine. We've got the, um, Poland. Poland, Poland, Poland. Do we need to chat about, like, the alliance? Because I feel like, oh, Poland. We were such good friends. I can't believe you're about to do this. If this is actually genuinely what you're about to do. No, no. Also, Hungary, give it up. You're not getting into Vienna. It's not happening. Thieves Guild in Alexandria. No, 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 no. I want a Merchant's Guild there, please. Right. So the big Russian force right here is... It is literally just archers. <laughs> With just a handful of flipping these guys. All right, that's amazing. Uh, diplomatic information. So... Ooh! Ooh! Oh, what the... What? Milan has attacked the Papal States... Okay, also, the French and the Venetians are now allies. Okay, Milan. Well, you remember how I said a few parts ago, Milan occasionally just goes crazy in their bloody nutters. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, so, what have they done? What have they, what have you done, you mad bastards? Um, I'm not sure. That's not under siege. That's not under siege. I must say, if they're flipping besieging Rome right now, they'll be bloody mental. Um... Hmm, they might have this place under blockade. I just can't see it right now. So, yeah, they've just attacked the Pope. And we're the strongest faction going, apparently. Intriguing. Intriguing, intriguing, intriguing. Yeah, this English force vaguely has ideas to take Bruges. Not a chance can they do it. Right, so everything just got interesting simultaneously there. And first things first, we need some more money. Have you trained some? Yes, you've trained some basic troops, unsurprisingly. You guys, put these guys under siege. So, if we can just get some basic ladders going on here, uh, you know what, can we wait for... Yeah, two turns. Two turns, one bit of actual tower. Hmm, actually, you know what, I can have... I can have, wait, if I wait two turns, that's two turns. Okay, let's get one more siege tower, and then another ladder, another two ladders. See if I can do it with just a ram and two ladders next turn. Because it's one archer militia... And one, I don't know. So we'll keep an eye on that. But yeah. Like, because they don't dare attack us, this actually works for me. Because now what I can do straight away is... Uh, I can just attack the capital. And because the people brought into the fight will be only those standing in the spaces. The nine spaces, or rather circles, I guess. Around the capital. Therefore, these guys don't get brought in. So I can now just basically move in here and take these guys out with my army. Pretty simple, all things considered. So there we are. There's the prince. The prince with two spear militia, together with some padded armor, his crossbow militia, and just him indeed. Oh, he's cowardly. Minus three morale. Good. That means we can take the walls even more easily than I was expecting to. And also, delusions of illness. Minus one morale and minus four from your general's hit points. That's just a disaster as well. <laughs> Uninhibited. Oh, I feel like I should just have let this guy become king. He'd have destroyed the Russian Empire by him flipping self. Uh, he is well spoken, though, which is nice. Plus authority there. Anything else? No, nothing major. Basically, he is just, yeah, catastrophically bad in the morale front. So, we just send our heavy infantry onto the walls. Everything there should just collapse. Beautiful. In we go. Let's take the Russian capital. No, ah! oh, they are doomed! Oh, Bolslaw Herman, I do like you. Saints preserve us. Do you suppose that such ugliness is catching? If so... We had best kill the enemy from a distance! I suppose that might have been a reference to the fact I've got multiple archers or something. But yeah, no mention of the fact they're Russians. No mention of the fact it's a siege. No mention of the fact that this is a capital. No mention of the fact that there's a reinforcing army nearby that's not getting involved. No mention of the fact the factioner himself is in the city. Rome Total War would have brought all of that up. But yeah, disappointing speeches. And here, here are my beautiful scouts now armed with proper light male armor. So these guys are now much tougher than they used to be. Very, very good indeed. Right, so good, nice Russian city that we need to take over over here. Let's see, we're approaching from... Where are we approaching from? Ah, I think we've seen this sort of layout before. This was... We took a rebel town with this layout at one point. It's a bit awkward, meaning potentially we might want to approach from, yeah... More like this angle when we ultimately move up because this is an awkward corner to work with. So, 
We'll see. We'll see how we decide to approach this city. But for the time being, we should be all right. Yeah. I imagine what they'll have is, yeah, they'll have troops dotted around here. They've got wall building and then wall fine. So we can basically just go straight up to the front door like this. Shouldn't be too much trouble. And then we can have reinforcements coming over here. While well, there'll be no towers, just kind of move around and clear things up. Ah, of course. And the epic peasants, who actually were actually on the ram last time, are back on the ram again. Marvellous. Though there's actually some flipping houses in the way. So we kind of need to like be approaching it a bit of a funny angle, just for the sake of making sure we don't run into these bloody houses. Marvellous. Right, everyone spread out as I'd like them to. So, start the battle. Pause. Let's see where they are. Ah, this is interesting. Spear militia decided to be way over there. Okay, so they've spread themselves out quite cleverly here. But this over here is basically right now not guarded, which works for me. Spear militia there and the crossbow militia are over there. Fine. So we can just basically run into them. Nice and simple. Take them out super fast. You guys just come up to the gates right now. You guys just come over to... Come over to... Interestingly, this tower doesn't seem to be on. Which is weird, but alright, whatever. Come over here. Take those guys out. You may as well just flipping get over to these guys as quickly as possible. You can just go... Just go over to here and you may as well run, quite frankly. Just get right into that fight. And then, yeah, we'll let you get over there first... And then, after everyone else has started moving, we'll actually send these guys in after that point, because there's no point getting them in too early. Now, hopefully we get lucky with the flaming business. At this point, yeah, crossbowmen can't actually use flaming bolts. That's just for normal archers. So, as a result, the chance of my towers burning down is less than it has been in certain other previous sieges against, say, large walls or against two sets of archers with flaming arrows. But it is still there. These guys just hang back for now. We'll send them in in a moment. These guys heading up here have only lost three strength. That's pretty damn good, I'd say. Partly because I think this tower's been distracted by these here towers. So that's okay. Um, is it time for these guys to go in? Yeah, I'd say it's probably fair for these guys to go in and start distracting these guys over here. So in you go, round here. Are you running? Yep, you are running. So you've got a safe approach over here. That's nice. Nothing's on fire yet. These guys now start climbing the towers. They are still at 115. They have not lost much strength. And proper dismounted Huskars will chop through spear militia very quickly. Especially when said spear militia are minus four morale. Beautiful. Now we've just got to hope that all three of our towers make it up to the walls. If so, that will be nice and simple. Peasants taking a bit of a battering. But I believe in you. Actually looks like they're already abandoning the walls. Right, hack them down. Hack them down. Hack them down. These guys are going to start losing strength very, very quickly. I think they're basically getting out of here. You guys. Oh, uh, yeah. You guys are in a spot of difficulty right now. Head over here. And just, yeah, just basically bum rush the gate as soon as it's open. So you guys just head over there. These guys are now coming over here. You guys are... Why you guys know? Climb the flipping ladders. All right, up the ladders, please. Get these guys if you can. Thank you very much. So, the other two towers have managed to make it over to here. You just hide, yeah, hide right down here, out of the way. These guys are now climbing up, which will probably get the attention of this spear militia who don't really know where they want to go right now. Yep, this is all going pretty fine so far. My troops need to ideally get on top of these guys. Those guys are abandoning the walls. Let them go. If they want to go, let them go. The walls are being abandoned in full. Fine. Basically, they've just accepted that the walls have given us a few casualties. They don't want to fight us here, though. If we can, just kind of, you know, grab them down. Just hack a few of them with your giant axes and whatever. Lovely. Right, gates down, and we've got plenty of troops ready to actually charge in, which is great, including these guys. So, you guys, in you go. Take out these flipping crossbow militia. In fact, you know what? Peasants, in you flipping go. Go, peasants, go. I believe in you. There we are. Crossbow militia. Actually do have massive swords in this game, so this will be an interesting one. Uh, it's going to be fine. It's going to be 100% fine. They're already shaken. These guys now need to chase these guys over here. You guys need to come down here. You guys need to also support these guys. And then we have, you know what? Start bringing in the reinforcements. I think they've pretty much abandoned everything. So uh, let's just start rushing these guys at this point. Lovely. Anything that we can catch before it makes it back to the plaza is beautiful. Meanwhile, back on the plaza itself is the... No, not the king. King is... Or rather, sorry, the faction heir is over here. So let's actually start bringing up some spearmen in case he decides to actually get involved. At this point, the... Well, the walls actually technically aren't ours at the moment. They are still bloody active, which is kind of irritating. But no matter. Right. 
Bring up these guys. Bring up you. You, start taking on these guys, please. Yep, they've lost the walls again. You guys over here, there is... Where are the... Who are they even taking on? Oh, there's just some flipping crossbow militia who are fighting to the death at this point, but that should be fine. You guys are... Oh, have you just decided to come back up here? No, no, you haven't. Well, get down there then. Come on. Hurry up on it. Right, one of you over here, if you can. Yeah, they are coming back up onto the walls. So, uh, take those guys on. That's absolutely fine. If they want to... Oh, if they want to rush in here... <laughs> oh, they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to do that one little bit. Right, so just stab them for a bit. Beautiful. They're going to be screwed. One unit is broken here. Get these guys over here. Everyone else just kind of basically just start heading down. Getting in there. Reinforcements coming in. Start chopping down these guys. Yeah, as soon as the first unit breaks, the chance of more units breaks is going up. These guys are already on wavering because of the massive, massive penalty to morale. These guys are, I think, yep, they're broken. They're gone. And they're going to take a lot of damage as they try and flee through. Because so we can just cut a bunch of them down. Yep, loads of them just got cut down. That was really cramped quarter fighting for them. Right. What I should probably do at this point is bring in some scouts. Bring in some scouts to just start riding these bastards down before they actually get away from me. Peasants! Chase, peasants, chase! So we've got scouts coming in. And at this point we've also got, yeah, the factionaire himself who's got... Ooh, they've got that lovely little banner there. I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, Russia has that lovely little kind of orthodoxy banner going on. That's cool. Right, now is anything else around here? No, you know what? Let those guys go. Let those guys go. We don't want to cause trouble. All of you, meanwhile... Finish off those guys, why not, eh? Right, you guys, fall back here. What we need to do now is... I'm pretty sure all their indirect fire is gone. So what we need to do now is basically get our spearmen up front and then start peppering everything else. Yeah, as I suspected. Uh, what we need to do is, yeah, get our spearmen up front round here. Up front round here. All of you guys, just where are the spearmen? There they are, right. So let's get the spearmen up and front and centre. And naturally bring up some archers as well, just to start the baiting procedure. Now, you guys, uh, drop here and form into your skiltrum, please. Lovely. Irritatingly, there are still two crossbow militia alive that managed to make it off the walls. Well, that's fine. I've now got flipping you guys here. Finish these bastards off, please. There we are. <laughs> Come on, Norse archers. Finish them off, please. One goes down, other goes down. Job flipping done. Right. So, now, let's just kind of get some fire over the top of this here. I think that's key. Yep, that's council chambers. Get some fire on these guys. Let's just draw them in, please. We've got a skiltrum waiting for them here. And then beyond that, some more mercenary spearmen behind them. Beautiful. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to start sending some other strength. Kind of round more in this sort of a direction. Round to about here. Just to start flanking. Including, yeah, the two units of archers we haven't used yet. Can also head in this direction. So let's see if you're going to respond to that at this point. Not yet. They're acknowledging something, but they're not charging us. The nice thing is, of course, this guy will die so quickly because of his whole kind of imagined illness thing. So he will die at like the first hit or something. Well, this is interesting. Uh, the king is abandoning this area right now because I've sent... Ooh. Oh, no. I was just sending a small flanking force round. And basically the king's caught sight of the peasants. Oh no. Oh peasants. I've asked much of you in the past. I'm going to have to ask even flipping more of you now. Because <laughs> it would flipping appear that unfortunately the king himself and his elite bodyguard is coming for you. Oh no. Why did you cut up this street when the others didn't? Oh that's a concern. Right. Back, 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 back if you can. Just everybody back. Everybody back. We're just going to have to apparently take on the king in this little side street. You guys, in here as quick as you can, please. Right, peasants, absorb the charge. Dismounted Huskarls, you're in there too. <laughs> okay, come on, peasants. I believe in you. Take out the flipping king. Also, while they're over there dealing with that, <laughs> that means I guess we just go in over here in that case. Right, so just, uh, yeah, you know what? Dismounted Huskarls over here. Go in, clear out these bastards. Well, my flipping archers over here just take pot shots at this here spear militia. Fine. Let's just clear out the plaza. Marvellous. <laughs> yeah, the king has started to go over there. You guys, close the trap. There we are. You know what? Flipping scouts. You like cavalry, but get behind the general's bodyguard because he's still got that massive morale penalty. So we are going to try and take on heavy cavalry with light, which is a stupid idea, but we're going to try and do it anyway, damn it. Go. Go for the king. Excellent. 
In he comes. He's at 53 strength right now. In come these flipping guys from behind. Well done. Chop him. Chop him down and basically get yourselves chopped down as well. Fortunately, he's, yeah, 52. We're going to lose a lot of strength taking care of that, which is unfortunate. But we have got dismounted Huskulls coming in to the plaza right now, which is excellent. They will just chop their way through... Yeah, they'll chop their way through Spear Militia like nobody's business, which is fine. You guys, meanwhile, head more in this direction. Just get around the back of them, make sure we're attacking them from multiple angles. You guys, stop firing at this point. That's fine. But yeah, you guys just get around the side here. We're going to take some serious catches. Oh, the poor peasants. The poor peasants. They give their lives for us so often. Right, and uh, into the rear. Boom. And there we are. Now we've got dismounted Huskars on two sides. Uh, those guys are in trouble very, very quickly indeed. You guys get in the background over here. These scouts are holding up surprisingly well. These are guys down to 30. Ooh, 37. Peasants, you're doing it again. <laughs> Nothing will kill these peasants. These peasants will never die. These peasants who I've just sent to go and find the flipping factionaire, the Prince of Russia. And they are doing it, damn it. Where is he? Where is the bastard? Let's see if we can find the man. Also, scout, you can back off. Make room for, yeah, these guys, the actual proper dismounted Huskars, to get in there and take care of that, please. Lovely. And meanwhile, yeah, we've got control of the plaza at this point. Those guys have been basically wiped out. Beautiful. Lovely. So now these guys can come over here. Is there anything even left? No, there's nothing left. In which case, let's just send some reinforcements around this way. We can either hold out for two minutes or we can just get this guy to break. Get this guy to break and that will be absolutely lovely. In which case, actually, you know what, guys? Out of your Skiltrum, you may as well go and reinforce if you can. You're in a Skiltrum right now? Uh, no, you were not already. Right. Run over here. You guys, get over here as well. You know what? Shoot this guy in the back. Why not? At this point, yes, the king is kind of surrounded by Huskars, who, of course, got the armor piercing. So his armor is not counting for as much. My peasants are trying to get involved here. Come on. Come on, peasants. In they come. In come the peasants. The king is right there. I would flipping love. I would just flipping love my peasants to get that final kill in. But right now, the dismounted Huskars are wailing. Wailing on the general's bodyguard. He has got himself minus four hit points. So he will go down relatively quickly. No, it was indeed the dismounted Huskars. It was this guy right here. No, no, no. Finish them. Finish them off. Let them all die. There we go. You just try and flee. You flipping try and flee, all right? I have got flipping reinforcements. Scouts, ride them down. Ride the bastards down. Enemy general fallen. The prince is dead. Marvelous. Job flipping done. Bit on the scruffy side. The poor peasants once again suffered badly. But yeah, to actually take a city that's actually got uh, the flipping faction there in it. With only 240 losses. I will take that every flipping time. Very, very nice indeed. And of course, those who took damage going up to the walls, they get their strength back. Whereas casualties from actual combat, you don't so much. Just like it was in Rome Total War. So... That place goes down nice and quickly. And here, I have got a plan. Which is the loyalty right now is content. So we don't need to exterminate this place. Sacking it, however, could be just the flipping thing. Because that gets me 7,000 florins. Which we are totally flipping doing. Also, apparently there were just two Russian merchants here who have been kicked out of the city. So we have gone straight up to 11,000 florins, meaning we can go on a little bit of a spending spree. Which is very, very welcome indeed. Helsinki can probably stay as a castle for the time being, by the way, purely on grounds that, uh, yeah, for the moment, Riga's a town, you're a town as well, so... So how far is this place? I think the border is, uh, just actually it's actually not on the river weirdly it's just beyond the river there's a spot here on the far side of the river that still already belongs to me so we need to go and have a look see at that moscow not sure we can be bothered to rush over there just yet they've also taken a territory somewhere over here but it looks like i should be able to detect ah the polish have indeed been expanding like flipping crazy <laughs> Right, the Polish have been expanding hugely. Right, okay, okay, okay. I see. Polish flipping things everywhere. So down here, the Polish own pretty much flipping everything, which unfortunately means there's not going to be an easy way for me to get down to uh, the actual Black Sea. Because I'm assuming, yeah, the Polish already own, like, all of this stuff. <laughs> which is hilarious, but well done to them. Fine. So my kind of plan to sneak around the back of Poland isn't going to work. But we can kind of cap the Polish Empire, if we could just take, yeah, there's a crappy little uh, wooden castle here that now belongs to the Russians. If we just go and take that 
as well as, yeah, Riga in a second, then that's Polish, and then we just go and take Moscow and then just basically leave just, uh, yeah, whatever this is, this can be just whatever's left of the Russian Empire, then I'd say we'll actually have, yeah, me and Poland together, if we can just stay friends, we'll actually have a very, very big empire together, which would be very, very nice indeed. Ah, that reminds me, our house, we've got a good, have we got a good assassin? No, we've got a bad assassin, that's like he's only one out of three. So if I try and take out their assassin with mine, only 30% chance to succeed. But let's get him down out the way here. We'll need to train him up somewhere, but oh yes, of course. The Polish. Speaking of the Polish, and my good friends the Polish, a very, very big army just rocked up into our territory. Guys, come on. Seriously. Actually, no, no, no. Screw that. Screw Viking Raiders. It's flipping dismounted Huskars all the way, damn it. Properly man the walls. Norse archers. Norse archers and more dismounted Huskars. Let's get some proper flipping guys going on here. Stettin can't really do much to us. Our house. Provide backup spearmen. These guys aren't very good, but to pad out the army, they'll do. So yeah, we have to spend a fair bit of that money we've just kind of got out of Russia just to make sure the Polish aren't about to attack us. And hopefully, they'll change their minds and back off in a second. Because otherwise they'd be bloody idiots. Do I want an abbey here? An abbey would be kind of fun. How much benefit do I get out of a fairground? Uh, I can't see because it's flashing, probably meaning someone else nearby has some benefit that's going on. Um, yeah, let's go for... Actually, happiness is a bit low. Let's go for a councillor's chambers around here. That'll be fine. Get some proper garrison quarters over here at Magdeburg as well. Hamburg is very soon going to be a proper big fortress, so good luck cracking that in if you can crack the other. This place is going to grow super fast as well. Let's get those guys, yeah. This place is going to be a city sooner rather than later, so start investing in, like, markets and whatever. That will do very, very nicely indeed. Peasantville, you can also have whatever you want. Well, I say that. The money's run out really quickly because of all the flipping army I've just had to put together. Because the Polish are possibly bloody invading. Me and them were getting on fine. Alright, that was not necessary, Poland. Right, let's get some more markets going in again. This place is going to be a city soon. Once this place is a city, then trade will take off like crazy. Alexandria, you can have, well, you can have whatever you want. You can have yourself a merchant's wharf. That's, that's pretty much what you can have. We've basically managed to spend all of the money already. So that's, that's a shame. I really genuinely thought like, you know, the money from actually ransacking that city was going to last longer than that, but it didn't. But I'll tell you what, we might be able to make a bit more yet because there's this very convenient big Russian army hanging out right here that I think we need to go and take out. Because yeah, we should have plenty of movement points this turn. Absolutely loads, in fact. So, you, take me on, why don't you? And, ooh... Hmm, yeah, actually. We take these guys on. What actually is it? It is literally four units of spear militia, and the rest is nothing but archers, and there's no general. We could run these guys down and then sell them. Sell them back. Right, peasants, you man the town just in case. Alright? Town's up to you. Also, yeah, we do need to build a small church here to assist with the conversion. Lovely. Blimey, I can get this place down to blue happiness, i.e. not revolting, with a single unit of peasants inside. Oh yes, very good. So, this captain here with his 1,700 men, yeah. We basically just need to presume just ride in with our cavalry. I think our cavalry can just go in and ride it all down. I think Bolton or Herman could probably take this battle pretty much by himself. All I need to do is pin those spearmen with my own dismounted Huskar, and then my cavalry can mop up the entirety of the rest in one great big block. It'll be brilliant. Oh, and better and better, we're going to be at the top of a flipping hill. Oh, that's marvellous. That's so... Okay, this is... You could not have planned this better. Bolster Herman, you're a tactical flipping genius. Right, get our archers up here, because even though they're the defending army, in Medieval 2, like, pretty much any opponent force just pretty much runs towards you like idiots, which is nice. So, we're nice and up here. <laughs> Got a good shot of everything below us. Marvellous. So, you guys can now just be lined up nice in here, ready to just run down the hill at the flipping spear militia. Let's keep our own spearmen at the back, just in case. You can be, like, more over here. There's no cavalry on the field, of course, but it's nice to just have these guys just protecting the flanks. And then, basically, as far as I'm concerned, we just want our cavalry in a great big block that's just going to ride down everything. So, you guys over here, and then... Oh, yes, mercenary crossbowmen. Sorry, I forgot I even had mercenary crossbowmen. Yeah, you know what? You guys join in as well. You get at the front as well. Right, so, that's all fine. Begin the battle. 
Now, what they're almost certainly going to do now is begin. Yep, they're going to start walking at us. Despite the fact that we began this fight and they are having to walk up a hill. But that just doesn't really concern them. Now, it feels like, yeah. If we just have, like, a single unit of good quality lads over this side. I'm going to have the entire rest of it on this side. Just thundering down the hill on this side to take them out. So you guys... Go over here. And indeed, my guys are already firing. My guys are actually already firing down there. And that's going to do... Oh, you actually pausing. Oh, that's a shame for you. That is such a shame. You are going to be nailed. Where are the arrows coming in? Where is... Oh, there they are. Yep, you are losing strength fast. Right. Let's get this cavalry thundering down the hill over here. Yep, down we come. Down we come. Down we come. Good luck, guys. Good flipping luck with it. Then there's... Yeah, these three have broken forward. They're just basically going to be smashed by my cavalry. So now go, and then go, and then go, and they will... Yeah, they're just going to back off before they even get anywhere. Now we just run into these guys. They will, yeah, mass break immediately. Make sure my guys are not targeting them. You guys go over here instead. Uh, you guys... Yeah, lovely. Team. Now we can just start mopping up. Uh, we are being shot by our own archers. So you guys, just stop firing for a second, please. Unless I tell you to fire, don't. So now, now just get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. Lovely. We've done a good first charge there. Got some experience. Life is good. Scouts, come on. Fall back. That's a good first engagement right there. And now, yes, these guys can now go back onto fire at will. Anything that comes into range. And would you believe these guys over here are going to be in range? Oh, Russia, you've put together a bad army over here. Because now, any minute, in come the flipping arrows. So that is a lot of dead Russians on the side of the hill here and only a handful of dead horses. Beautiful. In which case, what I need to do now is, feels like now, the weak flank is over here. If I just basically, yeah, count you guys out of this whole situation, I now need to just start slowly pushing my way forward with just my infantry and my archers. We'll just, yeah, just that. That's fine. Now, bring you in as well. Lovely. So, you guys, you are now part of a group. Push forward. Oh, they've decided they want to go forward. Okay. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you at all. It's a stupid idea. You're welcome to try it. Oh, dear. 65 down to 50, 45. Oh, yeah. And in come the horses, and they've broken. Lovely. In which case, yep, just push forward. Push, push forward here. Just a little bit further forward. You guys, there we are. Now just run forward over there. I think we've got some, yeah, we've got scouts on this side. Can just start chasing off some folks. Lovely. More people started to come forward over there. These guys will break almost immediately. Now we've moved forward a tiny bit. Yep, that's okay. So I'm just going to send this one unit of scouts down in this direction. Just start getting these guys off. These guys are trying to fire. So that is ballsy of you. Very, very ballsy indeed. They're falling back. <laughs> Some of them are falling back anyway. Oh, Russia. Russia, you've made a terrible decision here. By a terrible decision, I mean basically in the army competition. There's nothing they can do at this point. And all we need to do now really is just start weakening off the actual spear militia itself. And I think we are. Yep, we're in range of it. So now my archers can just start picking apart the spear militia. Nice and easy, and if any archers try and move forward, I'm just going to chase them off with horses just to make sure they don't get involved. My scouts can do a good job just getting rid of them. You see that? Nice and simple. They just back off. Now we'll just get you if need be. These guys basically break as soon as you touch them. Get these guys over here. My archers now concentrating all fire on the spear militia at the back just to make sure they don't cause trouble. And yes, indeed, we can just back off. Keep backing off. Keep buying myself time while my archers do the main work. And yes, indeed, Spear Militia just being slowly picked apart there. And looks like the Russians wanted to do kind of one nice little charge up the hill here, but they're already shaken. Let's send in some heavy infantry just to dissuade them, shall we? Guys, you want to do that? You're more than welcome. Go, go, go. Leader goes down. Looks like it's all collapsing now. Bolslaw Herman, get in there. You may as well help finish it all off few final guys are trying to fire arrows, but they're firing up a hill, so they're not really doing much. They'll break in a second. Uh, yep, everything's gone. Ride them down. Make sure we get all of them. I want all of them flipping dead here. Archers, you can probably stop at this point, please. Thank you. Bolslaw himself getting involved for the final few. I think that is your lot. 
This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. We stood on top of a hill and flipping shot down at them as they came. I don't feel like it was that, like, you know, virtuous or valorful or anything. Basically, Bolsonaro Herman last night, he was reading this book about this ancient general called Julianus Vatinius. Got some good ideas from it, actually. 48 men lost to 1,600 dead. Yeah, that's a Julianus Vatinius of a result right there. And all those people captured only have a value of 1,600. So, nope, they're being put to death. Down they all go. Beautiful. Well done. And Bolslaw Herman has indeed become cruel and cunning up to now. Four dread. Marvellous. Into the city you go, by the way. Very good indeed. And we can probably afford to put the tax rate up a little bit too. And trade will. Trade will pick up pretty darn quickly, actually. We've got ourselves, yep, we've got the road secured, all of that good stuff. Everything is under control for the time being. Let's just also very quickly, just a tiny bit further. Yep. Slap a watchtower down just to make sure nothing's coming imminently. But we're under control for now. And also quite importantly, yeah, now as a result, we have taken, if I just also blockade... No, actually, this is a fishing village. Right, that was the only Russian port into the Baltic area. So now they cannot produce any ships. They cannot come and harass my trade or anything. Everything is under control in that regard. But, yeah, this place just start making some very, very good money very, very quickly indeed. We shall honor the alliance. You say this, Poland, but I don't trust you for one flipping second, all right? How much are you actually oh, sending? Good stuff. Alive. Good stuff, unfortunately. And I suspect, yes, this is about to go wrong. Even though I'm about to train some good troops here, I don't have enough here to dissuade them, unfortunately. I could. I could send King Canoodle over to Magdeburg, but I'd rather have him coming with the reinforcements that we'll be able to train at Hamburg momentarily. I think that'll be for the better. Fine. Poland, if you're going to do this, let's see your hand. Let's see if you are truly traitors. France has taken Dijon, by the way, as you'd probably expect. France doing nicely at this moment in time. So my princess keeps heading over to... Ah, wait, if my... Oh, I was about to say, if my princess could, like, seduce the French faction there, then we could get an alliance that way, but no, my... Uh, unfortunately, my princess is ugly and useless, so that's not going to fly. You're totally heading over to Metz to finally take them. France is ending up with a big damn empire. They are mopping up the rebel settlements very, very quickly at this point. Imperial Assassin heading north. Don't like that one little bit, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to flipping stop him because my own assassin's kind of useless. I need to train him first. Imperials and Hungarians continuing to just kind of skirmish around here. Come on, let's get to the Polish. What are you going to do next? Because that's where this gets difficult. Yep, the English are indeed attempting to take Bruges. They will not succeed. Not a chance in hell. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see them actually uh, fail this very, very turn. That's the... Oh, wait, hang on. What was that? Did the Portuguese just... What have the Portuguese done? Poland, what are you about to do? Backing out. Backing out. Right. We've dissuaded them, but be aware, Poland, if we give them the opportunity, might just screw us over. And Hungary... <laughs> Give it up. Give it up, damn it. It's not gonna fly. Well, they're determined to give it a go. The fourth siege of Vienna begins. And as I suspected, the rebels have indeed straight away beaten back the English, but that has actually done a good job potentially weakening the forces of Bruges, which will work to my advantage. So, all pretty damn good and ooh. Oh, this is intriguing. Right, that wasn't what I was thinking was about to happen, but it could be worth having. Right, so rather than like a, say, a merchant guild, uh, Alexandra, a St. John's Minor Chapter House. Now, that's really, really damn good. I want that. I'm going to accept it straight away because if I go over to Alexandria, a St. John's Chapter House, basically the thing that it lets you do is it lets you produce knights. So Alexandria is a city, but I can now produce... These guys, look at these guys, attack 13, charge bonus 8, defense 16, best cavalry in my entire empire, and I can train it at a city. Very, very good indeed. And of course, I've got that because these things pop up particularly around like, you know, pilgrims and holy lands and crusades and whatever. So because this was indeed a city that was captured during or rather just after a crusade, yes, indeed, life is good. Although actually, a jihad has been called basically the Islamic crusades in this game. And the target is Baghdad. Good. Not going for me. These things fizzle out more often than not, by the way. Um, in this game... Yeah, Jihad in this game is really, really kind of, uh... 
Not very effective. Generally, you will find that literally no one joins a jihad, and it kind of ends with nothing actually happening. So, uh, jihad back in these days, not such a big deal. So, war declared. Yes, indeed, Portugal versus England. There's a weird, weird thing in the game code. I don't know what it is. Portugal is obsessed with coming up north and, like, taking over Wales and Ireland. They just are. It's a weird... It never doesn't happen. I've literally never seen a game where Portugal hasn't weirdly decided its attentions would be best served by heading north and trying to basically declare war on England and take over Wales. Portugal just wants Wales, damn it, and I don't bloody know why. It's just a bloody thing. Venice back to the strongest faction. Bolslaw Herman is... He's noble in rule, apparently, despite just sacking a city, then killing everyone in it. Whatever. But we have got ourselves. The economy... If not quite perfect, it is at least under control. And we have got ourselves, let's just see how strong is this force that we've actually got here. Grand Duke Vladimir himself, two archer militias, uh, and the faction leader who is uh, not great. Authority 3, Dread 4. But if we just keep taking out these bloody leaders, sooner or later, there's a possibility that the actual um, Royal House of Russia will literally run out of people. So they might actually, the entire faction could collapse if they literally don't have anyone to become king next. 36% Catholic here, that's good progress as well. Yep, this area is soon, and you know what? No, 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 I think this is, I think this needs to be changed, thank you. Welcome to the city of Vikingrad. Lovely, Vikingrad taken over by Bolslaw. And Stockholm and Stettin both become nice little towns. Ah, and that is very important because six... 100 florins worth of mining just became available at Stockholm. There is a lot of stuff to be dug up here. Silver mines timed, I believe, several dotted around. So as a result, mines all over the place. 600 florins a turn. That is just flipping great. Right flipping there. Stettin, nothing so quite dramatic. But it would be nice to just get them a port. Just get an extra port into the Baltic in preparation for the possibility that in the future they could become a bigger deal than they are. But yes, my real view is on Peasantville. Now over 5,000 people. And Oslo, almost 4,000 and rising fast. Soon we will have cities all over the north of our empire. Soon, Russia will be made to serve us, and their quite valuable cities, like Vikingrad, will most certainly be doing us some very good work indeed. And soon, our empire down here in the Middle East will be looking very, very good indeed. Already 63% Catholic, 46% Catholic, and as soon as we get Catholicism down here, pretty much sorted out, these settlements should calm down very, very nicely, and we'll be ready to push the war against Egypt a little bit further. So, all of that to come soon, ladies and gentlemen. War with Egypt, war with Russia, and well, well, war with Poland extremely narrowly avoided, but uh, we'll have to see whether we can keep that up. It feels like maybe Poland aren't going to be quite the friends I was hoping for. They certainly came close to attacking us there. So we will have to see, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you very much and goodbye. I can also just take this person and make them FEMA. Can I just... <laughs> Perfect. I'm delighted we share the same level of ambition. Complete mediocrity all of the way. And then, oh, oh, the people at the back just kind of popped into existence there for a second. Okay, let's try this again with something else. I'm going to see if we can get Mr. Potato Head into this game.